Okay, so um, I got to say, this is one of the more uh, interesting stories we've covered in a while. It has to do with AI and a kind of crazy budget. Yeah, it's uh, definitely caught my attention. It's not every day you see a project that costs like $5.5 million shaking up an industry dominated by billion dollar players. You're telling me, so like for our listeners, we're diving into uh, this whole AI scene and this uh, project that's making waves. It's kind of a classic David versus Goliath situation, right? Absolutely. And what makes it even more interesting is that it's not just about the money, it's about the whole approach they've taken. Okay, so can you uh, break that down a bit? Like, what's so different about this project? Sure, so the key here is that they've made their model open source, meaning the code is basically free for anyone to use, modify, and share. It's like throwing open the doors and saying, come on in, let's build this together. Huh, so instead of keeping it all hush-hush, they're like, uh, inviting the whole world to participate. Precisely. And that's what's got everyone buzzing. This open source approach is fostering a global community of developers who are all contributing to the model's advancement. Okay, but how does that translate to actual results? Well, get this. Benchmark tests are showing that this model, developed for a fraction of the cost, is actually outperforming some of the big names in AI, the ones that have poured billions into their own projects. Wow, seriously. So wait, are you saying they're actually beating the giants at their own game? It appears so. And it's causing a stir, to say the least. We've caught wind of some internal chatter, particularly at one prominent tech company. And let's just say they're not exactly thrilled. Really? What are they, uh, what are they saying? Well, from what we've gathered, there's a sense of panic. Employees are talking about feeling behind in benchmarks, scrambling to catch up. One employee even went as far as to call it an impact grab mentality. An impact grab? What does that even mean? It basically suggests that the company might be prioritizing short-term gains and appearances over, you know, genuine long-term development. They're more focused on making a big splash, even if it means sacrificing true progress, you know. So basically style over substance. You got it. And this employee didn't hold back. They went on to criticize excessive hiring practices and what they call a bloated AI division, basically suggesting that the company is throwing money at the problem instead of fostering real innovation. Hmm, interesting. So it sounds like this whole open source thing is really shaking things up, huh? Definitely. And here's another twist. The creators of this disruptive model have just released a second one, also open source, this time focused on reasoning tasks. Hold on, the second one? Are they like uh, giving me the farm here? It seems they're committed to this idea of democratizing AI. This new model is positioned to compete directly with a very prominent reasoning model, but their version is free to use, even for commercial purposes. Wow, no strings attached. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty bold. It is, and it raises a ton of questions like, what does this mean for the future of AI innovation? If a relatively small team can pull this off, does that change the whole game? You're right. It kind of throws everything we thought we knew out the window. It does. And it challenges the assumption that you need billions of dollars to make a real impact in AI. This story is a game changer. So where do we go from here? What happens next? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? What happens to the big players? How does the open source community evolve? And most importantly, how does this affect the average person? We'll dig into all of that and more after a quick break. All right. Sounds good. We'll be right back after this. Stick around. We'll have more on this fascinating story in just a bit. All right. So uh, we've been talking about these benchmarks. I think it's worth uh, pausing for a second and explaining like what they actually are, right? right? Because they're kind of crucial to this whole story. Yeah, you're right. We've uh, thrown that term around a lot. Can you break it down for us? Like, What exactly are these tests? Sure. Think of benchmark tests as uh, standardized exams for AI models. They're designed to evaluate performance across various tasks. Things like understanding and generating text, translating languages, even writing different kinds of creative content. It's a way to objectively measure how well a model performs. Okay, so it's like uh, a way to compare apples to apples. Yeah. Right? To see which model is like the smartest. Exactly. And that's why these results are so significant. The fact that this uh, relatively low budget model is outperforming some of the heavy hitters is what's causing all the commotion. Right. Because it challenges the assumption that, uh, you know, more money always equals better results. Absolutely. And it raises questions about like the effectiveness of those traditional approaches to AI development, mm -hmm. the ones that rely on, you know, massive data sets and huge computational power. So we talked about uh, this one company that seems to be scrambling in response. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about their reaction? Like, how are they trying to adapt to this uh, this new landscape? 
Well, the information we have suggests they're in a uh, bit of a reactive mode. They're trying to catch up by analyzing this new model, trying to, you know, incorporate elements of it into their own work. It's almost like they're uh, playing catch up now instead of leading the pack. Yeah, it's a uh, tough position to be in, especially when you're used to being at the forefront of innovation. So do we know anything about their overall strategy? Like, are they going to change course because of this? It's... Uh, tough to say for sure but this situation could definitely force them to you know rethink their approach yeah. maybe they double down on their current path or maybe they embrace a more open collaborative model it's a, a pivotal moment for them it really is so let's zoom out a bit uh, all this tech talk is fascinating but what does it mean for you know the average person like why should they care about this that's a, a a great question. And I think the answer is that this shift has the potential to impact all of us. If the barriers to entry in AI are lowered, as this case suggests, we could see an explosion of innovation. So more people working on AI means uh, more cool stuff coming out. Right. And it's not just about, you know, cool gadgets. Think about the potential benefits for things like healthcare, education, even uh, addressing climate change. The possibilities are pretty mind blowing. It's exciting to think about. Yeah. But, you know, there are always two sides to every coin. What about the potential downsides? Things like job displacement or misuse of this technology. Those are uh, definitely valid concerns, and they need to be addressed as this technology continues to evolve. The key is to ensure that AI development is guided by, you know, ethical considerations. We need to be thinking about the impact on society as a whole. So it's like uh, a tightrope war, yeah. right? We need to push the boundaries of innovation, but also make sure we're doing it responsibly. Exactly. And that's a conversation that needs to involve a lot of different voices, not just, you know, tech people, policymakers, ethicists, everyday citizens. We all need to be part of shaping the future of AI. It sounds like this is just the beginning of a, uh, a much bigger story. Oh, absolutely. This is just the tip of the iceberg, and it'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds. All right. So uh, as we wrap things up, what are some key developments that we should be paying attention to? Like, what are the big questions going forward? Well, one thing to watch is how the established players adapt, right? Will they resist change or will they embrace this open source movement? And then there's the question of how the open source community itself evolves. Will we see even more groundbreaking models coming from this, you know, collaborative approach? Can I imagine the geopolitical implications are huge too, right? Yeah. This could change the balance of power in the AI world. You're absolutely right. This is a global story and the stakes are incredibly high. You know, it's really... Uh... Kind of wild to think that, like, this one project, this one relatively small team could, like, disrupt this whole massive industry. It really shows you uh, the power of a fresh perspective, right? Like, sometimes you need someone to come in from the outside and shake things up a bit. And for our listeners out there, like, the people who maybe aren't, you know, deep in the AI world, what would you say is like the main takeaway from all of this? I think the uh, the key thing here is that we're seeing a real shift in how AI is being developed. It's becoming more accessible, more democratic. So it's not just about, uh, you know, the big companies anymore. Right. It's about empowering individuals, communities, researchers from all over the world. And that has the potential to unlock some truly amazing innovations. It's pretty exciting to think about, you know, all the possibilities. But like we were talking about before, there are... Uh, there are risks too, right? Absolutely. With any powerful technology, there's always the potential for misuse. So it's crucial to be mindful of the ethical implications to ensure that AI is developed and used responsibly. So we need to be like really careful about how we steer this thing. Yeah, we need to have those tough conversations about the impact on society, about yeah. potential biases, about the long-term consequences. And those conversations need to involve everyone, not just the tech experts. It's, yeah. a, uh, it's a big responsibility. It is. But it's also an incredible opportunity. We're at a pivotal moment, and the choices we make now will shape the future of AI. So as we uh, wrap up this deep dive, what's like the one thing you want our listeners to walk away with? Stay curious. Stay engaged. The future of AI is being written right now, and we all have a part to play in making sure it's a future that benefits everyone. So, you know, keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep pushing for responsible development. This is a journey we're all on together. Thanks for uh, for joining us today. It's been uh, it's been a fascinating conversation. It really has. I, I 